Yesterday, Yaraji explained about Buddha, the Nama Rupa, that are arising due to the relevant cause, which can be discerned by experiential knowledge. These Buddha are these Buddha are really existing and they are Paramatha, the ultimate truth. Whatever arises within oneself, they are Buddha and they should be noted. At the moment they arise, at the moment they are present. Pasati, yogi should be mindful of these objects. By being mindful, yogi will discern them. In order to discern them, yogi should note them with strengthened mind. When Buddha arises, one should note with effort. One should put effort so that the noting mind will reach the object. In order that the noting mind would be face to face or direct with the object, Yogi should aim the noting mind towards the object. Aiming, directing the mind onto the object is one of the jhanic factors. So in this way, one should assert these two factors aiming, directing the noting mind, asserting effort in the practice. If the yogi is able to note with these two factors, aiming and effort, then the noting mind hits the target, the object of meditation. When the noting mind hits the target, the object of meditation, then yogi practice will not be uncertain. His or her practice will become certain and his or her practice will be proper. It is very important to be able to discern Buddha and one should assert effort in the practice so that the practice will progress. If the yogi is lazy and sluggish, not asserting effort in the practice, withdrawing from the practice, flinching away from the practice, being exhausted, wanting to take easy in the practice, then Shogi will not discern the Buddha. As a human being, just as it is important to make a living in life, working hard, not taking easy with one's work, and also there are responsibility as a human being. If the person fails to do such responsibilities without making any effort, then taking easy, then the person is being blamed by others as a foolish person, useless person. The laziness, the sluggishness, is making the person to be called as a useless person. And the person is called Kusita, lazy, indolent person, if the person is not asserting effort. In the practice, Jogi should be asserting effort every single second. 
It's a jogi. It's not a certain effort. Take it easy in the practice. Then jogi noting mind will not reach the object of meditation. Not a certain effort in the practice. The noting mind will not reach the object. Not aiming, directing the mind onto the object. The noting mind will not be direct or face to face with the object. Failing to note the object with aim and effort, the noting will not be effective. The noting mind will not hit the target, the object of meditation, and thus the person's practice will be uncertain. His or her life will also become uncertain. A person with the life being uncertain will live in suffering. Dukkha viharati, meaning that the person lives in suffering. Such kind of lazy and indolent person lives in suffering. Being mixed with wrongful thoughts, the person's mind will go on to sensual objects. The person's mind will go on to pleasant objects, wanting to see good things, wanting to hear good sounds, and so on. So greed will arise, wanting to see good things, wanting to hear good sounds, and so on. And coming across undesirable objects, there will be wrongful thoughts with ill will, aversion, hatred, and there can be other delusions such as envy, jealousy, stinginess, cruelty thoughts wanting to torment others. Being mixed with the unwholesome thoughts Wrongful thought, the person lives in suffering. Lacking control of oneself, one will be unruly, one will be cruel, unruly, and gross. The example is given here when driving a car, the driver should know the traffic regulation. If the driver does not follow the traffic regulation, if the driver does not drive according to the prescribed speed, if the driver is speeding, then the person will end up in an accident. In order not to end up in an accident, the person should drive according to the traffic regulation. When the person comes to a traffic light, if the light is green, the person is free to go. If the light is yellow, one should slow down. And if the light is red, one should stop. Failing to drive according to the traffic light, there will be an accident. In the same way, in life, one should refrain from wrongful actions by body, speech, and mind. Committing wrongdoing, failing to observe the morality, failing to observe the moral conduct, one will not be a true human. And also, failing to refrain from wrongful thoughts, the person's mind will not be humane. And failing to practice, the person will not have a humane, human knowledge, and thus the person will be inferior.
In this way, the person is losing one's own benefit. The person is losing one's own benefit, which are sila, samadhi, and banya, morality, concentration, and wisdom. In order to keep one's body and speech be proper, one should observe the sila, morality. In order to have pure mind, in order to purify the mind, one should practice samadhi, concentration. And in order to develop wisdom, one should practice banya. In order to develop knowledge. So, having developed knowledge, the person will have spiritual stamina. If the person does not practice Silas, Madhi and Banya, the person is losing one's own benefit. So in the world, there are a lot of people who are losing their true welfare, their true benefit, failing to practice Sila, Mari, and Banya, and they end up having social problems such as tension, stress, depression, and so on. So these social problems such as stress, tension, stress, and depression arise as they fail to practice Sila, Mari, and Banya. Practicing Sila, Smadi, and Banya, one will become true human, one will have humane mind, and one will have human knowledge. The person who does not assert effort, the person who takes easy, the person will have all these problems, and the person will not have any solution to the problem failing to practice. The person who loses one's own true welfare of Sila, Smadi and Banya, then the person will be rude and gross. Failing to practice sila, morality, the person's body and speech will not be pure or clean. Without morality, the person's body and speech will be rude and gross, and the person's life will also be gross and the person will live in suffering. Failing to practice sila, morality, which is the foundation of a good person, failing to practice the sila, the person will be inferior and degraded. Not having control of the mind, the mind will be stray, going here and there, thinking wrongful thoughts, having karma vitaka, sensual thoughts, jabada vitaka, ill will thoughts, vihemsa vitaka, cruelty thoughts. Having these wrongful thoughts, the mind will not be pure and clean, the mind will be unwholesome, rude, and gross. Having this deformment, having delusion, one will not know the truth, and one will be knowing wrongly. What really is arising, what is really, what really exists, are the Nama Rupa, mentality and materiality. 
Not being mindful, the person does not discern the nama rupa. Not discerning the nama rupa, the person has wrong knowing. The person knows wrongly that it is a man, a woman, it is a living soul, and the person knows wrongly that there is the asa in the being. Instead of knowing as suffering, the person takes it as good and pleasant. In this way, the person knows wrongly. Without having control of one's body and mind, the person will not be in peace. Not having knowledge, the person lives in suffering. Committing wrongdoing, the person is inferior and degraded, and the person's life will be totally chaotic. And there will be bhavasati, rebirth. Having rebirth, even though one does not want to suffer, there will be suffering, there will be physical suffering, and there will be mental suffering. So in this way, with suffering, the person will not be in comfort. So these arise, these suffering arise because the person does not understand oneself. The person does not understand Buddha as Buddha. So these suffering arise because the person does not discern Buddha. The person does not discern Buddha as the person Fail to be mindful. Failing to be mindful when one comes across desirable objects, there will be greed. Coming across undesirable objects, there will be anger, hatred, aversion, and thus the person will be impure and the person is losing one own benefit. These are the cause of losing one own benefit. Later on, Sanaji will explain about Atta. Buddha prescribed Sila, Samadhi, and Vanya. These three trainings, Vilas, Mari, and Vanya, as the person's true welfare, true benefit. One should practice Sila Sikha, Samadhi Sikha, and Vanya Sikha, the three trainings. Failing to practice the three trainings, the person will lose good quality of a human being and the person will be inferior and degraded. As a human being, one should live by the one should live by the the conduct. One should have the training of Sila, Mari and Vanya. One should practice the three trainings and one should learn the correct method of practice and one should practice the three trainings in order to be free from suffering. By practicing the three trainings, one can remove three forms of defilement which are the cause of suffering. The three forms of defilement 
The first one is Vite Kamaki Lesa, transgressive defilement, committing transgression, hurting others. Or Vite Kamaki Lesa, transgressive defilement, which manifests in bodily behavior and verbal behavior. The second one is Priyutana Kilesa, obsessive defilement that manifests in the mind, wanting to kill others, wanting to torment others, wanting to lie, and so on. Failing to control one's mind, there will be boiling in the mind, and it is Priyutana Kilesa, Obsessive defilement, which manifests in the mind. Anusya kilesa are the latent dormant defilements, which have not been uprooted. So the defilements which have not been uprooted, they are lying latent and dormant, while there is Seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, bending, stretching, whatever the person is doing, the anusya kilesa lie latent and dormant. Even though the person will be reborn in the next assistant, the defilement still lie latent and dormant so long as the person has not totally uprooted them. So these latent and dormant defilements lie within the person and whenever there is the opportunity they will surface in the form of loba, dosa, and moha. So these latent and dormant defilements, anusya kilesa, are seeking for the opportunity and they will surface whenever there are favorable circumstances. So when given the opportunity, when the when there are favorable circumstances, the defilement will surface and it will manifest as transgression and obsession. So among the three types of defilement, the first one, Vitekamaki Lesa, transgressive defilement should be prevented from arising. So there should be viramana, there should be abstaining. And one has to observe the precepts saying viramami, I will abstain from such wrongdoing. So in this way, Videkamati Lesa Transgressive defilement can be removed by abstaining, abstaining from wrongdoing by body and speech. So the example is given here. If there is a certain place where there is contagious illness, one should avoid oneself from going to such place where the contagious illness is breaking out. And in the Buddha's time, there was an illness called Ahivata, which was very, which was contagious, and it was fatal with a lot of casualties. So, if there is a person afflicted with Ahivata, then other persons cannot go near 
and the person will catch the illness from the person afflicted with ahibata. So other people had to avoid the contact with the afflicted person. So in the same way, the Videka Makileka transgressive defilement should be removed by abstaining. One should take vows, abstaining from certain things. One should abstain from wrongdoing in order to remove the transgressive defilement. So one should take the vows of precepts in order to remove the transgressive defilement. So one should prevent oneself, one should refrain oneself in order to remove the transgressive defilement. And the example is given, doctors always give advice to the patient to prevent certain things. So the person should prevent oneself from going to places where there are plague or malaria. In the same way, one has to abstain oneself from wrongdoing in order to remove the transgressive defilement. The illness that can arise in the mind cannot be removed by abstaining. So one should one should have prevention and cure in order to remove the mental uh, illness. So in order to remove obsessive defilement, one should practice samadhi concentration. Based on the objects that the person encounter, if there is lack of mindfulness, the defilement will have opportunity to arise. So that's why it is very important to have mindfulness. One should be mindful on presently arising objects. One should be practicing with sustained mindfulness and the mind is being guarded, protected with mindfulness so that the defilement cannot arise. And if the defilements arise, one should know them right away. One should cure them right away by being mindful. So in this way, one should practice sila morality in order to remove transgressive defilements. One should practice samadhi, concentration, in order to remove obsessive defilement. And the defilement that arise should be suppressed and uprooted. So the example is given here. When a person has fever, the person should be given ice pack in order to bring the high fever down. And medicine should be given. The patient that has malaria should be given medicine in order to cure the illness. And also given ice bag in order to um, bring down the fever. Taking medication, if the fever does not arise again, then it is said that the malaria is cured. So in the same way, one should prevent cure, uh, one should prevent, suppress, cure, and uproot the defilement. And one should practice vipassana in order to develop knowledge. By developing knowledge, one can uproot the defilement. So Buddha had prescribed sila, samadhi, and panya in order to 
remove the defilement. If the per if the person is lacking effort, the courage, then the person will be mixed with three kinds of mitya vidaka, wrongful thought, failing to assert courageous effort, being mixed with wrongful thought. The person's body, speech, and mind will be impure. By working, the person earns a salary, and the person can make a living. In the same way, one has to practice the last mali and banya. In order to gain one true welfare, one true benefit, failing to practice hilas mali and banya, which is one, which is the person's true welfare, failing to have hilas mali and banya, the person will not have comfort. Or happiness. It is said that kusi to bekave dukkha viharati. Lazy, indolent person lives in suffering. Everyone does not like suffering. Everyone likes to have comfort and happiness. Wanting to have comfort and happiness. The person should prevent oneself from the causes which cause suffering. So, as a human being, one should have sila samadhi and panya. Having sila samadhi and panya, one will be virtuous and one will be uplifted. Having sila samadhi and panya. One has virtue, and one per, one's life will become beautiful with good qualities. The person who is lazy and indolent will not have virtue, and the person will not have good qualities. The person will not be virtuous. So, in order to gain virtue, one should assert effort. And later on, Saraji will explain how one should be asserting effort correctly. And this will be all for today. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.